Hi, welcome to NAB 2017. I'm Joe O'Halloran, Editor-in-Chief of Rapid TV News. And I'm here with Richard Brandon, Chief Marketing Officer of Edgware. Oh, Richard. Hi. Been a great year so far for online video and video everywhere. What are you seeing the key trends and dynamics of the industry? Uh, I think there's probably three things that are happening that are, that are you know, all equally interesting. And the first one I suppose we've seen now for a couple of years, which is that move to complete convenience from the viewer's perspective, watching something on any device whenever you want to, uh, something which only a couple of years ago seemed, seemed you know, quite new. Um, the second is uh, moving TV to be much more realistic. So uh, obviously up from HD to 4K, but also we've got customers now looking at 360 degree virtual reality. Um, and the third one, I suppose, is still the, the still yet to come stuff, the still future stuff, where TV is no, not just convenient and, and, and as realistic as real life, but more so almost, that we will have viewers picking their own camera angles and, and you know, engaging with the experience in a way that you couldn't even do at a real live event. I guess when you've got that TV literally everywhere, literally anywhere. There's a huge expectation of quality from the end user these days. How do you guarantee the QOE? Well, it's, you're right, it's a, it's, a, it's a massive challenge and it's getting a lot harder as, because of the trends that we just discussed, because of the, the, the demand to watch whenever you want means that people aren't tuning into some broadcast mechanism, they're getting their own stream. A move to 4K is making it a lot harder for the networks to cope with delivery. Uh, and all this puts a strain on, on the internet or private IP networks that they were never designed to meet. Um, and uh, people are turning to CDN technologies to, to meet the, the, that kind of problem, but um, you know, that in itself is probably not going to be enough. Well, you just outlined some challenges for providing acceptable services. Now, I'd actually take issue with you. I think the CDN, a robust CDN is absolutely essential in this. So well, well, it is, and maybe the key is the word robust, and, and it's a question of specialism. I, I, I mean, really, you know, as the industry started to see more TV yeah. over IP, um, people have turned to fairly general purpose public CDN services, originally designed to do Microsoft software updates and Apple iOS software updates, and um, not necessarily sufficient to deliver ultra low latency live sports for example or, or to meet the scale and, and cost effectiveness required for the kind of TV we're seeing now. Which I guess what Edgeware is built out for and we're here at NEB so how, what are you doing in these areas to guarantee those things? Yeah it's, it's exactly of course the problem we're trying to solve uh, for our customers is um, essentially how to build your own TV specific CDN. Uh, rather than just going and buying a service, partly because of cost, um, uh, but particularly because of quality. So, um, you know, a, a specific example of that would be uh, if we if we look at the way Netflix have, have uh, scaled out their service, they've put out um, literally hundreds of servers and caching around the world, and our customers are looking to do the same. In, in fact, even greater densities within their their own footprints. How much of that is 4K? Is the drive to 4K somewhat overstated? It's um, it's not much of it is not 4K yet. I mean, we've got customers that are still transitioning a lot of their viewing into HD. Uh, so, 4K is really yet to hit that as a, as a as a wave of problem for a lot of people. And obviously, it's going to be four times as much data to shift. Uh, and if you're buying a service every month, your bill's just gone up by a factor of four. Um, people are starting to get ready for that by building their own. But isn't that good news for you in the long run? It is good news for us, and uh, of course, not everyone will. It won't make it sense for everybody to, to build their own, but for a lot of um, a lot of our customers, it, it will, and that's that's uh, yeah, that's that's great news for Edgeware, of course. So, looking at what you do, how is that reflected here at NEB? What solutions do you have available? So, we have uh, solutions really starting the origin part of the network through to distribution. Um, we're announcing a significant new uh, technology improvement actually this uh, year at the show uh, where we're taking the repackaging function which is the function that takes a standard format and puts it into the appropriate uh, format for each client. So Apple clients, Android clients, set-top boxes all want a different format. 
Um, and what we've had to do up till now as, a, as an industry is uh, repackage that centrally and then distribute each different version of the repackaged format. And we're pushing that out into the CDN, so now we only have to store a single file version of each program and distribute out a single file version of each program. And then right at the edge of the network at the last minute, when the client requests that specific version, we'll repackage that on the fly, saving two or three times as much bandwidth through the network and two or three times the storage. Are you seeing the client base change in terms of their nature um, or from, where, from where you've started? We, we, yeah, I think we're, we're seeing more broadcasters than we might have seen a few years ago. Um, uh, I think most people that set out to build their own CDNs initially already had a network. They were more familiar with it. They had um, places to, dis to physically install equipment. So cable TV companies, telcos. Um, but yeah, as, as a shift to people that own content, that are more likely to broad be a broadcaster or content owner, uh, we're now seeing that category of customer also starting to deploy their own. So given what you said about the changed nature of the customers, what have you got on your roadmap over the next 12 months to address their needs? So one of the significant things we've done is to uh, start to deploy all of our functions in software only. Uh, so we deploy a lot of stuff on our own purpose-built silicon-based appliance. Uh, and we still will, but uh, as we move into different customer base, we're also seeing demand for those solutions on software that runs on standard uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware and service. So uh, that would be a change that maybe not everyone might have expected from Edgeware. It seems like there's a lot of general purpose IT coming into the broadcast market. Mm -hmm. Things like virtualization. Is this a good or a bad thing? Well, it, of course the answer is it depends, and it very much depends on, on what part of that function of distribution you're looking at. So things that are very processor intensive, work really well on cloud IT, um, actually you know, processing all the requests for all the different uh, um, requests of segments to be sent works very well on virtualized general IT. But what you can't really win is the actual physical distribution. And th there's a sense that, okay, everything must be better if it's in the cloud, but there's a point where you have to say, where actually is the cloud? And if you're, if you're trying to move your heavy lifting, your actual streaming and caching into some centralized location, possibly one you don't even own, you're not gonna get the same quality of experience. You are gonna get network buffering delays. Um, so there's nothing wrong with virtualizing a lot of the functions in there and the right ones and scaling the right ones on general purpose IT. But at some point you have to physically have a, a, a server streaming your TV from as close to the viewer as possible. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching.